to be with everybody this first Sunday of the new year. We celebrated on um, our uh, Wednesday night service the first day of the year, and it was a powerful service, and um, I talked a, a lot about going into the new year and about really about the purpose of church and, and what it's all about. But, you know, we, we are living in some crazy times, are we not? I'm telling you, when I turn on the news and, you know, we know all the things that are going on over in the Middle East and over in Iran, and um, we uh, know, I mean, if many of you probably have heard all the fire that is going on in Australia. It is just like, I mean, it, is a, it just, it blows me away when we really hear and you really go look at the world news and you take it past your backyard. Amen. And you look at what's happening as a whole. But how many of you know that that God has a, a prophetic word for pathetic times? Amen. That's what he does. And that's who he is. And God's not nervous. Uh, and God knows everything. In fact, the Bible said that, that uh, he sits in the heavens and laughs. Amen. And so as we move into 2020, um, I encourage you to get the tape from Wednesday night. It really um, came out a lot different than what I thought it was going to, but I shared my heart about the, the the purpose of what church is, and I think many times people misunderstand and misread what the church is really even all about. And how many of you know we need church? Amen? We need church. And when we begin to get complacent, um, I had made a comment last Sunday, I believe, that said that uh, today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Whatever you get comfortable with today will take you captive tomorrow. And so we have to always be on guard and we always have to be on the alert for what God is wanting to do inside of our lives. And so this morning I have a, a, a quick word. I talk a lot and we've always ministered a lot on the mind around here. And why I do that is because a lot of the people that sit in our midst when we're doing series and on Sunday mornings, I'm not on the um, evangelistic field right now. Amen. I'm looking around a room at believers. I'm looking around a room at people that already are saved. And you know how you got saved. You know why you're saved. And you're here today because you're saved. But when we look at uh, ministering week after week and service after service, there is something in the Bible that talks about us being transformed and not being conformed. Amen to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so we talk a lot about the mind because we're dealing with people that are already saved. You know, when uh, when Dr. Brian is out today in Israel, I don't think he's preaching on the mind. Amen. I think he's preaching about Jesus Christ and him crucified in the blood of Christ. And I ask you to continue to keep them um, in prayer. Uh, I was talking to him the other night. And he said, we, we have no idea what persecution is really about. We have no idea in the church of the living God. We have uh, some people. And in fact, you met Pastor Sergio. He was over here about four years ago. And um, stayed in our home for a couple of weeks and and uh, he is in his church they have a hard time having church in Israel because what happens is is they have to have church under what is not a church they have to have another purpose for the building um, because they're not allowed to just say that they're messianic Jews and be allowed to have a building to worship in so they always go in under another whether they're doing a schooling whether they're doing food giveaway you know whatever it is they find another outreach to do and in the middle of all that have church well what happens is uh, they rent buildings that are very very expensive uh, no matter how small it is and then as soon as landlords find out their messianic Jews contracts are broke and they have to move to another location and so it gets you know it's it's just everything that they do is, is persecution but how many of you know that's not where we are today but I will tell you as Christians in our nation, we are headed that direction. Amen. We are headed towards a persecution of the church such as we have never known in our times. I believe that with all my heart. And so in the middle of all that, we have to keep our minds clear. We have to keep our minds on task 
all the time because we don't want what we become familiar with, what we get comfortable in, what we shrink back in to become captive to us tomorrow that pushes us into a place of persecution. Amen? And so I want you to open your Bibles this morning because I'm just going to talk for a few minutes about mindsets. And I know you're like, oh, here we go again and here we go again. Amen? Because I've learned one thing in my own life is if I have to talk to my mind every day. Amen? I can't listen to what my mind has to say. I have to tell and talk to my mind every day and tell it what it's going to do. And I don't think I'm any exception when I look around the room. Amen? As we go through life, there are many seasons, cycles, changes in relationships and jobs and opportunities that you have, child rearing that you have. All these seasons and cycles in life change, and with that comes a mindset that has to be changed as well. So in Numbers chapter 14, I'm going to start there this morning. Um, all you're familiar with, Moses is getting ready, um, and he's, the Lord's given him instructions, and he's telling him, you know, to, to send out spies into Canaan and um, to check out the land that God said he was going to give, the land of Canaan. And then it says in verse, in uh, Numbers 14, it says, All of the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why would the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. We hear many, many times, many sermons over the years about not going back to Egypt, not going back to the place where you once was. But when we move into New Year's, and I get so tickled, I, I, I'm just going to give you, you know, the power of what a mindset does. Uh, if any of you are TV watchers around here at all, when I say, say the word Peloton, you're going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Every other commercial on TV right now is a Peloton bicycle that looks so good to be sitting there. I mean, I almost went and ordered one. I'm like, they've almost convinced me that I could ride a bike in my living room, amen, <laughs> and be all slim and trim. And it's, I mean, am I, am I telling the truth? Because that's been the advertisement of 2000 and ending 2019 going into 2020. Someone get me a Peloton. Talk about the power of a mind. Advertisement knows the power of that is in putting something before your eyes enough times with enough encouragement to be able to say, I think think you need to go there. How many of you have that treadmill that you ordered three years ago that is now hanging laundry? Amen? It's where sweaters dry. Amen? It's where you just hang them up all on the ends. You know, we have, a, we have been through the ellipticals. They were, it was in my living room. I'm like, get that thing out of my living room. Then it went to the garage. It's like, get that thing out of my garage. Then bring it to the church and put it over there. And then this poor little elliptical. And then, and then it was like, well, that elliptical really don't work for well. So we'll just go with the treadmill. Oh, okay, let's go buy a treadmill. And all these things just because someone's spoke something and you got a picture in your mind of what it was going to be like when it was over. I mean, really seriously, I want you to watch the Peloton commercial very carefully. And then I want you to examine your mindset and tell me where you're going to be on January 15th. Once that thing gets here and you've used it three times and decided this is killing me. Amen. That's the power of what a mindset is. And advertisement knows it. There is a reason that the beer companies pay millions of dollars to get a 30-second spot in the Super Bowl. Amen. There is a reason behind why all businesses pay to advertise. But what happens in a New Year's resolution, and we talked about them the other night, and Andy said, you know, I don't even like New Year's revolution, resolutions. It's not that the resolution that you make is bad. It's that the resolution you made is most of the time made by your emotions. You're driven to the end of the year. I, I mean, come on. Let's, can we be really honest? Has anyone already broken their resolution that they made? 
she chooses not to make them. How many of you chose not to make any? <laughs> you know, I'm going to be honest with you. That's probably a good mindset. <laughs> Because that's what happens is we're controlled by those emotions. And what happens is the only way a New Year's resolution really comes about is if we change our mind. I was having breakfast with a friend of mine yesterday morning and, and we were talking about all that she's very health oriented and, and all that stuff and tells me everything I should do and not do and all that stuff and I smile and nod my head. And I finally looked at her three-fourths way through it and I said, it's all about this. You can give me all that stuff if you want to. <laughs> but if you don't change this in me, <laughs> you're wasting your time. She's just laughing at me. Because I know that's the truth. I know that the only way that I ever am able to do anything like that is I have to read and I have to input and I have to put it. And I'm not putting it in my heart. I'm putting it in my head. Amen? I have to put it in my head. And I have to make a decision to be able to do those kinds of things. So here is the children of Israel. And they are in the middle of the wilderness. And they have a mindset. They are sitting. Now, we have to go back and we have to remember how bad Israel really was. Now, we're going to go through this in a lot of different areas of our lives. Because we can do this spiritually, go back to Egypt. We can relationally go back to Egypt. Amen. We can do, we can go back to Egypt in more than just one area. Remember when I said Wednesday night, location, location, location. Egypt is a location, and all those locations have different names. And you may not be in Egypt in one area of your life, but you may be headed back to Egypt in another area of your life. And so here's this congregation, and they're crying to leadership, and they're beginning to complain to leadership. Now let's just stop and think for a minute that this complaint they are lodging against Moses right now is the very prayer that they prayed in that past season to be delivered from and now they've received this deliverance and now all of a sudden now we're praying again just send us back because what you didn't like what you prayed for or what you got didn't look like what you think thought it was going to look like and so that's what happens so we have to reset our minds amen we have to do it every day. It's not, it's not anything that has to do with psychology. It has to do with, it is the decisions that you make that God has trained your mind and opened your mind and gave you the ability to put what you wanted to put in your mind. We blame everything on the devil. Sometimes, come on, sometimes the devil never even has to show up to ruin my life. I'm just being honest with you. I do quite a good job on my own many, many days because I make choices what goes in. I, 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 I learned to quit blaming the devil for everything in my life a long time ago. In fact, most of the time I take a look at me first before I ever turn around to see if he was in the picture somewhere. Amen? Because it's usually about me. So here we are. We're in this resolution period. New year. Everything's going to change. Now, I've been saying that. For probably a couple of weeks, 2020 is going to be a great year. I've been prophesying because I know a lot of people in 2019 went through some rough things. Amen? Been a rough year. I've heard it not just in this church. I've heard it a lot of places. Man, come on. I need to get this year behind me, and I need to be able to pick up, and I need to be able to move on. And I'm not prophesying it to try to get you all like, oh, get your emotions all worked up. I'm trying to change my mindset. I'm trying to change my mindset. So you can hear me say it once in a while, but if you don't begin to speak it yourself, then nothing's going to change. Amen? And so, you know, it, it's funny because so many people really don't understand. You know, the Bible tells us that the, the worlds were formed by the Word of God. It tells us that in Hebrews. The worlds were formed. They were framed by the Word of God. Guess what? Your world is framed by your words. And whatever it is that you've spoken five years ago is probably where you are today. Amen? We all know that. And, it, and, I, and I think about this because sometimes our mindsets came from places of hurt, wounding, rejections. Some mindsets are good. Some mindsets we have are strong. You know, 
I've got a don't quit mindset. It's pretty strong because why? I've put that in my mind for 20 some years. I'm not going to quit. I don't care how bad it gets. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But there can be other areas where I don't have a good mindset. So to sit and say, my, I'm not talking about our whole mind. I'm asking you to pull out different compartments of your mind and how you think. And let's begin to work on something for 2020. Because all your mindset isn't bad. You wouldn't be here this morning. Amen. <laughs> you wouldn't have woke up this morning. But where about that mindset? I'm going to just, and I've talked about this many times, but it's a perfect example and an easy example for me to be able to use in my life where a mindset was concerned. You know, I went through divorce. I raised children alone. My mindset was take care of me. I will learn how to take care of me. I don't need a man for anything. I will do this on my own. Okay. That was my mindset. Didn't say it was a good mindset. I said it was my mindset. And it came through hurt, and it came through rejection, and it came through a lot of things. So as I raised my kids, my girls, the first statement that I would always make to them as they begin to grow up was, you're going to be able to provide for yourself because you're not going to count on a man for nothing. Now, I'm, I'm being serious. As a saved person, that was my mindset. And if I didn't say it out loud, whoo. The wheels was turning. Amen. And so I raised my daughters that way. It was like, you've got to decide what you're going to do. You've got to go into a field, not what you want to do. You've got to go into a field where you can make money. You've got to know that you can put food on the table for your babies when that man decides he's going to walk off and leave you. But that was my mindset. And I didn't mean that to push that on my daughters, my, my experiences, my hurts. I did it because that was my mindset. And I had never healed from it and never emotionally recovered from all of it. And so I did it to protect them. I did it because I loved them. I didn't do it to hurt them. Yet at the same time, you know, we went up to Kelly gets ready to go to college. She wants to go to Ohio State. I've pushed her from day one. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I remember Rhonda being in high school. You got to go into the medical field. You got to get into a nurse. You got to know that you can take care of yourself. I remember just saying that over and over again. You got to know you can make money. You're in a good field. And why in my head, it was like medical was where all the money was. And back then, it truly was where all the money was. Amen. And so I pushed that. Of course, she followed suit and she's done great. Amen. But then I came to do that to my daughter and it didn't work that way. Now, she followed along with me to get her way to get to Ohio State. It worked real well when it was all going good for her. And then when she got up there, I start hearing this, I don't want to do this. And in my mind, I don't care what you want to do. You're not paying for it. So guess what? You're going to do what I want you to do. And I watched her, her um, spirit begin to sink. And it was like every time she would go to do something, it was like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm here, I'm doing this. And then all of a sudden, you know, we have an issue where, you know, I don't want to do this, Mom, and I'm mad, and I'm throwing a fit, and, and uh, you're going to do it anyway until God begins to deal with my mindset. And but God begins to deal with me and say, why are you pushing that on her? What, she doesn't want to do that. And I'm like, but God, I know more than she does. I know more than she does. What does she know? She's just up there because she wants to be with her boyfriend anyway. She don't have a clue what she wants. I mean, come on. How many 18, 19-year-old kids really know what life's all about? But mama's going to control this situation. She's going to make sure. And so God began to deal with me about my mindset. And he, he began to say, why don't you have faith for her future? What about the faith for her future not being in money? Because everything in my future was always about money. Because until you have no job and you have three kids to feed, you don't understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> you don't understand where I'm coming from because that, that, is, a, that is a dig. <laughs> That's a deep hole that goes into that mind of you got to learn how to take care of yourself. So I pushed her into this mindset. God had to begin to deal with me and tell me that the, I needed to have enough faith for her future that was more than money. The faith I had to have for her future was more than about money. I hit some of you right there. <laughs> 
Because when you come from poverty and you come from an area of poverty, the faith for the future, do you know why every 18 and 19 year old wants to leave this town? It's because of money. There's nothing here for them. That's their mentality. That's their mindset. And I wonder who put it there. I wonder that anyone ever looked at Jackson and began to tell their kids, wow, do you see the potential that's here? Wow, do you know what you could do in your future in this county? Do you know what you could do in southeastern Ohio? Or have we set our mindsets to say, ah, there ain't nothing here. You're never going to get a good job here. You're going to have to leave this area to do this. And I may be totally alone. There may be someone out there that really got this way ahead of me. But when I look at our area, I know the majority is with me and we've got to change that we have to change that and change doesn't start in the community change starts in us as individuals change starts in families change starts in the way we begin to see things different and so I pushed my mindset to try to control her world I pushed it and then I had to go back and say I'm sorry I sinned against you what do you want to do with your future? And she said, Mom, I want to teach. Oh, everything inside me, everything inside me was like, no. But I swallowed my mindset. And then I seen pictures of children's church when she was nine, ten years old. Can I go down there with the little babies? Can I go down there and teach a class? Am I going to be old enough to teach a class? Blah, 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 blah. And I begin to hear the heart for what God had for her future. Now, how many of you have ever had children and they came up and they said, you know, I think I want to do this. And you're like, ugh. See, I'm not, I'm not alone. And the biggest reason you said it, was it about money? Do you remember a few weeks ago when I preached, what would you do in your life if you were paid $10 an hour, no matter what occupation you chose, what would you choose to do with your life? Because that's where your mindset needs to be. That's where your mindset needs to be. And so, anyway, so this mindset we need, to, needs to be able to say to us, whatever we put our mind to, we can do. So, remember even just a couple weeks ago, I began to talk about how we have to carry possibilities as pregnancies on the inside of us. You know, when God, God is a God of the impossible. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. So if we don't put seeds of possibilities down on the inside of us through our minds to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be an overcomer. I can be victorious. I can go to a top rated college. I can achieve this in life. I can work out this relationship. I don't have to stay in these messed up dysfunctional mindsets that life pushes into us. Amen? Here they were. Here's the children of Israel. They had cried out. It said the Lord heard their groanings. They weren't just saying, hey God, get us up out of here. They were groaning and travailing to be delivered from this bondage situation that they had been into. And they kept crying out for deliverance. But deliverance didn't come. Instead, God sent a deliverer. So it didn't come in the package they thought it was going to. I don't know if they just thought God was just going to wave his wand and they were just going to be translated out of Egypt and into Canaan land. I don't know how they thought deliverance was going to happen, but I guarantee you no one in their mind thought it was going to come through Moses. And so as God raised up and answers their prayer and sends a deliverer to bring them into deliverance, once he's brought them into deliverance, they begin to grumble and complain because why? Their minds were still thinking like they were back in Egypt. Now, we have a problem today. I, I heard someone, I was listening to a teaching a couple weeks ago. I can't even remember who it was now. I listen to many people. Um, but they were talking about David and Goliath. 
And they weren't talking about mindsets, but I was thinking about mindsets, so I'm putting it in to the scenario of mindsets. We all look at David and we're like, we've heard the story. We know the story. Everybody knows. Here's this little tiny David. He takes these five little stones and he goes up against this great big giant. And we sit and think, oh my goodness, poor little David. He must like have really been up against this big, huge giant. You know, I just don't know if I could. You know what? David volunteered to go fight that giant. He wasn't pushed into that situation. David had a mindset that was so strong that he literally said, Hey, man, send me there. Let me go. I'll go take out that. I'll go. I know he had a mindset that was bigger than what his body was, that was bigger than what his age was, that was bigger than his brothers. He had a mindset that was bigger than the entire army that was being mocked by this giant. Amen. And he went in and volunteered to go to battle. We're running from battle. I don't know about you. I've always tried to run from battle. I've always tried to take the stance. You know what, devil? I'll just stay over here. You leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. Because, I, you know, I don't want to get whooped. And then I begin to see this, and I'm like, wait a minute. David went running into battle, <laughs> prepared with a mindset to know that I am not going to be defeated, that I, I am more than able through God <laughs> in the name of whom I, the God whom I serve to take this giant out. And so what was that? It was nothing more than a mindset. What's your mindset? Are you volunteering to go take out your Goliath? Or are you just cowering away from it and waiting on some of your brothers or sisters to go do it for you? See, we gotta, we got to change the way we're thinking. Amen? And so what happens was, what happens in mindsets is this. We inherit a lot of things. Amen? We inherit traits and behaviors and tendencies. We inherit. We hear all about the generational stuff. We inherit. But you know what? Some of us inherit mindsets. Mom always thought this way. Grandma always thought this way. Daddy always said it this way. It's the way it was always going to be. And we never realize that, you know, if, if, if daddy was a racist, then I got to be a racist. If daddy was a sexist, then I got to be a sexist. If, if mama was a victim, then I got to be a victim. Those mentalities we grow up with and we begin to take on those tendencies and we begin to think in a way that's not God and it's so normal to us we don't even recognize it. And that's what New Year's bring. They bring a shake into us. Is there anything in my mind that I'm not thinking right about? Is there anything in my mind that I've accepted defeat for, but yet I am more than an overcomer in? Is there any fight that I've put off and put on the back burner because I don't think that God's going to give me the victory to go in and fight it? We've got to get rid of the way we thought when we were growing up. We've got to get rid of the way we were brought up. Even if you were brought up in the house of God, I guarantee guarantee you that religion puts some kind of restriction on your mind. I guarantee you, as a preacher, I've put mindsets in people that cause them to settle for things that they shouldn't have been settling for. But we got to break all that stuff off of us, and we've got to move past that. Because when God wants to elevate you, when God wants to take you to another place, the first thing he deals with is your head. My mom used to say it was stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. And so Proverbs 23, verse 7. We know the scripture. We talk about it all the time. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That, the word heart there deals a lot in the area of the soul. As a man thinks in his mind and his will and his emotions, so there he goes. There, that's where he is. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. What is he saying? My mind isn't there. I'm saying all the right things, but my mind isn't thinking clearly. How many of you need some mind change? <laughs> We're looking at numbers. The mindset that they had in Numbers 14 did not start in Numbers 14. The mindset that they had started clear back in Exodus. When they were in bondage. And they were being made to make bricks with no straw. And their mindsets began to be poverty driven. And their mindsets began to be victim driven. Their mindsets were not even when the deliverer came. Their mindsets weren't changed. 
oh, just let us go back to where we were. You know how the Bible says in Proverbs that a dog returns to his own vomit? It's because of a mindset. That sounds like such a gross scripture. I say, God, what would you word that like that for? That's disgusting. But that's the way that it is. That's what a mindset does to us. So, you know, here we have it, and here, here's Moses, and Moses is out there. Now, go back to Numbers 13. Back up one chapter, because I want to show you what I'm talking about scripturally. In verses 27 and 28. Because here they were, and God had told him, you send out the spies, tell them to go up there and see what the land of Canaan's like, because I've already given you the land. The land's already yours. Okay? And so in Numbers 13, before we get to 14, and they're complaining, begging to go back to Egypt, saying now, okay, we're going to reject the deliverer that you sent, and we're going to choose a leader for ourselves to take us back into our mess. Oh, how we could preach there. Because you know what? Sometimes those deliverers take place of people that aren't called to deliver you at all. But you chose them for yourself, and so now you're in a mess. Amen? And so here's Numbers 13. And it said, and they told him and said, this is they're coming back. The spies are coming back. They're reporting back to Moses, and they said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit, bringing them the big grapes. Nevertheless, the people who dwell there in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, which was what? The giants. Now, it's really interesting because when you study the deliverance and the exodus and the way that they were taken when they were taken out into the wilderness the bible tells us it would have been a much shorter way for them to go through the land of the philistines which we know was where giants were but god chose not to do that because he knew that when they saw what they were going to have to fight through that they would take every opportunity that they had to turn back so he takes them by way of the wilderness trying to get the mindset changed over a period of 40 years and here we have guess what a whole generation gone by and the mindset is still the same he tried to deliver them but knew it would never work so he took them the long way around the mountain <laughs> these people now are in the land of giants here's what happens when we change our mindsets listen to me you expect advancement without opposition You think all I have to do is change my mind. And once I've changed my mind, everything's just going to fall into place. Oh, I may have to work at it just a little bit. But advancement comes with opposition. They were given Canaan land. They had to go in and possess it. They had to lay claims to it. They had to fight some battles in the very land that they had been promised. But we want deliverance into the land of milk and honey, and we want to go there without struggle. We want to go there without a fight. And when the fight shows up, then we take the card, well, you know, God isn't going to do that for me. And we pull the I'm going to blame God card because we didn't know that he's with us in the battle. We didn't know that they had already given, you've already been given the land, but you're going to have to go through some things. You're going to have to face some opposition. Sometimes just breaking up an old mindset is opposition enough. They had, when a time for the advancement came, they started complaining. It was time for them to move forward. They should have been glorifying God. <laughs> they should have been looking and saying, man, God gave it to us. We are more than able. But there was only two of those 12 spies that had changed their mindset. The Joshua and the Caleb that didn't have the mindset that everybody else had. So they come up out of Egypt, but their mind was still in Egypt. Listen to this. Your mindset is revealed by what you run back to when you're in trouble. When you run back to the past, when you get in trouble, your mindset just got exposed. 
not to the world. It's all, it, it is exposed to the world. But the problem is it's exposed to you. And now you've got to take responsibility for it. Amen? And so they had a mindset that they wanted to settle in Canaan, not struggle to get to Canaan. Now, I don't know about you, but we can take a mindset of settling. I, I, I'll tell you, here, here is the generation of the mindset of settling. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Whatever. Whatever. Oh, I tell you, I don't know how many times I want to slap, the spirit of slap, come on me when my kids or my grandkids are like, whatever. That is nothing but a mindset that just wants to settle. Don't matter. No big deal. Whatever will be, will be. That's not, that's not a good mindset. That's, that's, a, that's what they wanted. They wanted to just go into Canaan and plop down and say, look what the Lord hath done. But it didn't work that way. And guess what? Life doesn't work that way. You may once in a while run into a place where like, wow, God opened a door. I walked in and here I am. Don't know how I got here. Don't know how I'm staying here. Don't even know what's going on, but I'm here. Most of the time, when you walk through a door, there is going to be a struggle. But the battle belongs to the Lord. But we don't want to go to battle. We want deliverance. We don't want to listen to the deliverer take us to the process of deliverance. <laughs> They'd come out of Egypt, but their mind was still there. Have you settled spiritually? Have you said, you know what? I'll just go into church and praise, but I got no peace. I'll just settle. That's good enough. Good enough for me. Are you satisfied with just, hey, I've got to get out a free card? I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven, but I don't want to change. You've settled. You've settled for less than what God has for you on this earth. Because God wants to change our minds. He wants to change our mindsets. The same God that gives you John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him not perish but have ever asked. That same God that saved you is the same God that said, "Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." The same God that said, you know, be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. The same God that said, you can be more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Just settling for salvation. No, I, the salvation is the whole package. Don't, please, don't misunderstand me that I'm weakening salvation and turning it into a, a psychology, you got to deal with your mind thing. God's the one that said you got to deal with your mind, not me. God's the one that said we were a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. And we can look at, at the church at large and literally say, we got a bunch of saved people that are messed up. Why? Because mindsets aren't right. Mindsets are wrong. So we got to deal with them. What, I mean, <laughs> you hear about a God that says, you know, I'm going to help you get through this. I will survive. I will survive. I will make it. But we don't realize that he's the same God that said, I can cause you to prosper. I can cause you to thrive in the middle of this mess. There's more to it. Like I said the other day, there's another side of the coin sometimes that we don't look at when it comes to the word of God. He's the God that promises me, not just that he'll save me, but he'll fill me with his Holy Spirit. And he's going to give me all the gifts, the callings that I need inside of my life to complete a purpose in this life. And my purpose is bigger than just getting saved. My salvation is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And I won't trade it off for nothing, but I won't not take something that God has for me and just settle for my salvation. I want to go on. The Bible tells us we're to go on to the saving of our soul. We can settle in relationships. We can settle with wrong people that need removed from our lives. Amen? We can settle for, well, I don't deserve anything better than that. We can settle for, well, I'm always going to be a loner. We can settle in so many areas. We can settle in your ministry gifts. You can settle, oh, I'm happy. I'm not going to go no farther. It's, I'm just fine. Just leave me alone. I enjoy working the nursery. I enjoy working. I enjoy doing that. You may be doing what you're called to do, but you can't settle in there. God has more. Amen.
The logo of this church is because there's more. There's more for you. Guess what? There's more for, for Dr. Brian. There's more for Pastor Andy. There's more for me. There's more for you. There's more for Marty and Rob. There's more for all of us. Amen? But if we don't get out of the mindset, if we don't lose the mindset of fear, if we don't lose the mindset of being a victim, if we don't lose the mindset of being rejected, we got to get rid of the stinking thinking of what we've had. Amen? Sometimes God has to remove wrong people in your lives. Why? So he can inject the right people. Sometimes he can't hook you up. I, I do. And all the young girls said, oh, here she goes. Sometimes. God has to deliver you from Mr. Wrong so that you can go through a season of detoxing from Mr. Wrong until Mr. Right comes. And when Mr. Right comes, you're going to be thanking me that you listen today. I'm just saying... Soul ties are strong. Fleshly screaming and desires is strong. But it's not stronger than the will of God for our lives. Amen? There is a place in God that sometimes you settle. I know divorced people that have children that say, well, I'll just settle for so-and-so because who wants me and all my baggage that I have? Don't you dare settle for that. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the daughter of the king. You don't have to settle for anybody. You don't have to support anybody. Anybody? You don't have to mama anybody. You are a woman of God, and you deserve to be treated like a woman of God, no matter what kind of mess you've been in. Oh, I'm done. You see yourself too small. You see yourself too broken, because you don't know who you are. I had to get past the mentality of what the labels in Jackson County wanted to put on me. And I had to look in the mirror and say, God, I'm all yours. Everything I am, everything I'm not, every failure and every success, I am completely yours. And I will keep my tunnel vision on the cross. And I will keep my eyes in the mirror of your word. And I don't care what anybody wants to say. I don't care if they say you shouldn't be pastor in a church. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they want to run me out of Jackson. I'm not going nowhere until God shows me because I know who I am. I know what he's healed me from. I know how he's touched my life and I am not turning back and going to settle for what the world, the mind, the community, the family, the church, or anybody else wants to put on me. Why? Because I had to kill some giants in myself. And I'm not alone in this room because I look around and see a lot of women and see a lot of men that have killed some giants in your life. Because guess what? This just don't go for women. This goes for men too. You don't have to stay with the woman who's beating the tar out of you because you've messed up in the past and you think she's all you can get. Because I've come to the conclusion in our world today that the women are beating on men as much as the men are beating on the women. <laughs> no, I'm, telling, I'm talking truth up in I'm going to turn into Andy Yeager. I'll be a gangster. <laughs> that fruit didn't fall far from the tree. I'm supposed to be older and more dignified. Sorry. <laughs> you go messing around. Oh, don't you get me started. Your mindset can't be, I didn't go to college, so there ain't no hope for me now. You can't have as a mindset. I didn't go to college, so I'm only going to be making minimum wage. You can't have that mindset. You can't keep that mindset. My brother used to say all the time, people would come to him and say, I'm 45 years old. I haven't trained to do nothing. I can't go back to college. It'd take me five years. He'd say, how old are you going to be in five years? They'd say 50. He'd say, then go to school. It's a mindset. 
It's a mindset. <laughs> you can spend time wishing you can reclaim your time, or you can spend your time reclaiming your time. Wow. It's all a matter of the way you think. Do you think different? Are we going to think different? Remember Peloton. Do, 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 do. Come on. We need a spiritual Peloton going on right up in here. I'm telling you, you need to be dressed for the occasion. Amen. You need to have the atmosphere set. You need to see all those mountains and those hills and those giants. Amen. You need to see your cannon land and you need to keep pedaling. And there may not be nobody there with you, but the Holy Spirit's leading you. And he's stronger than that voice telling you one more climb. Oh, Jesus. Andy probably should have started his series today. <sighs> oh, I heard, I, heard a, I heard someone say this. I was listening to, I, I've been kind of filled up the last couple of weeks. I'm hearing all these people say, listen to this. <laughs> Settling is a mindset, and it's an insult to the one who created you. It's an insult to the one who created you to settle for anything less than God's best for you. Why? Because everything we do in our life is supposed to be giving glory to God. And if I'm just settling, God's not getting all the glory. That's due his name. Oh, that's good. The bar of expectation, even within the church, has been lowered in regards to healing, in regards to finances, in regards to a lot of different areas. Because there's a fear that if I think too big and if I believe too big, then I might be disappointed and I don't want to handle disappointment. So we condemn people that are teaching people to, to, to go for more, to go for more. And we're praising people that are like, settle for less, settle for less. Just, you know, bring God down a little bit. Oh, God calls us to fight the good fight of faith. He wants us to advance our lives because of assignment. He wants to take you to Canaan, Canaan land because someone in Canaan land needs to see what you've been through in your life so that they too can move forward and get out of being settled. I don't want to settle. We ought to be full of the words. I used to do that. I used to do this, and I used to think that way, and I used to respond that way. We ought to have the used to, ought to be in our vocabulary every day. I used to pray every day. I used to read. I used to believe God for healing, but now I'm just settling in. I'm going to live with this old ache and pain in my knee till I die. Because after all, don't you know I'm 62 years old? I look at my knee, I say, get on up out of here. You don't have time. We are not going here. Uh-uh, Peloton, call my name. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh. That commercial, if it's not stuck in your head, it is now. <laughs> Am I the only one that's noticed that? Every 30 seconds, it's a Peloton commercial. I'm like, and it doesn't matter what channel you're watching. It can be the Hallmark Channel, and there's Peloton. It could be Fox News and there's Peloton. I'm like, man, I don't know. My pillow is like taking the back seat to the Peloton. Maybe that's prophetic. Maybe that's prophetic. Quit ordering my pillow and settling your little mindset down on that pillow and get you a Peloton. <laughs> I knew I could make some spiritual out of that if I tried hard enough. I knew I could. <laughs> That is hysterical. Oh, move over mypillow.com. I am so sorry. If you're religious, you are talking about me bad right now. It's okay because I know who I am. And I know he delivered me out of a pickle face. He delivered me out of pain and hurt. And I can have be full of joy and peace. And I can have fun when I read his word. And I, when God gives me revelations, let it be fun. Amen. Let it be something I relate to. Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, you can do it. If God be for you, you can recover. If God be for you, you can whip giants in your life. If God be for you, you can put down the bottle. If God be for you, you can beat the drugs. If God be for you, you can love your husband. If God 
God be for you, you can prophesy in the house of God. If God be for you, you can do the works of the Lord. And if God be for you, you can reset your mind. It's your choice. It's your choice. <laughs> Theologian Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones once said, have you realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? All the words that are in your mind, are they negative? Are they condemning? Are they scriptural based? Do they have any life on the words that are coming out of your mouth? You know, I remember when this church first started, they, people would walk around with little file cards. There weren't even st sticky notes that didn't exist. when this, That's how old we are. There was no such thing as a sticky note. In fact, when sticky notes come out, you had to be rich to be able to afford them. Amen? <clears throat> we would write scriptures on file cards. And people would carry them around all over the place. And they'd put them on their mirrors and they'd put them in their car. Nick, remember? Yeah, I'd see people walking around town. They'd have three or four little, little recipe file cards with scriptures. They were memorizing. Why? Because mindsets had to be changed. And over a period of years, if you'll put this word, your mind will change. And your mind will start becoming more positive and less negative. It doesn't happen overnight. There is no God's going to wave his magic little wand and come down and take care of everything for you. It's going to be a struggle. But what scriptures are you standing on? What scriptures are you standing on for the things that you're thinking or the things that you're saying? What scriptures do we have to back us up? We have to change our confession. Why in 2020 can you not expect victory? Many of you could answer because I'm afraid of being disappointed. Change your mindset. Whether you get what you want or whether you don't, God is still with you. Amen? He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never taken his hands off you. And if we don't reach for something then we're going to gain nothing. Change our mindsets. If you are a person that fights sickness, expect divine health when you get up tomorrow. Well, I still feel, and we're not going by feelings. We're changing our minds. Amen? We're changing our minds. If we want answered prayer, then let's expect answered prayer. I share over and over again all the time. The first thing I say when I pray is, Father, I thank you that you hear me today and that I have your ear as I come before your throne this morning. I thank you you hear me. I don't say that for God. I say that for me. <laughs> Hi, he hears me. He's listening. Amen. Expect blessings. Get rid of the generational curses. Quit expecting what happened yesterday to happen again today. Expect success. Don't look for the failure to come again. Expect victory. What I'm saying today is take your mindset and aim a little bit higher. Because it'll get us through this next year. Put 2019 behind you and say, it's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new hour. I'm not thinking that way anymore. That stinking thinking has got to go. It's got to leave me. Amen? <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. You know why? Because purpose is in your future. I put a thing on the ladies group yesterday, and I said, the very breath that you breathe today it shows you that you still have purpose. If you woke up breathing today, no matter how bad you feel, no matter how far you think you've fallen, no matter how disappointed in life you are, no matter what circumstances you're going through, if you are breathing right now, God has a purpose for you. He does. Amen? So can we go into this year changing our minds? Changing our minds. One area at a time. <laughs> One area at a time. Andy calls it taking ownership. Owning the stuff and then thinking God thoughts. 
I can honestly say, I don't want to be in captivity tomorrow, do you? You know that old saying, you are what you tolerate. My husband, wherever you go, there you are. See, I have a mindset that when my husband, when I call my husband and I say, where are you? I'm going to hear a response. The same response almost every time I call. And he's going to say 32 inches from the windshield. And I'm going to want to reach across the phone and say, can you come up with another line? Because <laughs> in his mind, when he sees my call, he says he's 32 inches from the windshield. Drives me crazy. And he knows it drives me crazy, so it's carried on for years. So one day I switched the, flipped the scritch, and he called and said, where are you at? I said, about 24 inches from the windshield. you got longer legs than I do. So is, aren't we creatures of habit? You know where those habits come from? We do what our mind tells us to. Choices. Choices. So let's stand to our feet. And I want you to know this morning <laughs> that if you will put God on the inside of you, you're going to face some struggles. But I promise you advancement if you do it his way. I'm not going to say you're never going to meet up with disappointment. I'm never going to say that you're going to look like sometimes you don't even know where God is. But I'm telling you, if you will put God in you, and you will renew your mind with his word, he will move in circumstances, and we will be giving him more glory in 2020 than we gave him in 2019. There are some people in this place that need freedom. There's people in this place that need delivered. There's people in this place that are that close to running back to Egypt. I'm telling you right now, it's inevitable if you get a group of people together that you're not going to have people in every different areas of their mind getting hit with warfare. But I'm just going to believe for the goodness of God this morning. Amen. And Father, I just pray right now over every person within the sound of my voice. And I pray, God, for this year to be crowned with your goodness. And I pray, Father God, that you're going to deal with the hearts about every mindset that needs to be dealt with and changed. Here a little, there a little, God. That you're taking us from glory to glory. That you're elevating us and moving us from levels in your word that we never even thought was possible. God, we repent of complacency in our lives in the name of Jesus because we don't want to be held captive tomorrow. And Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus and we release and forgive every person that we've judged falsely. We release and forgive every person that's ever hurt us, ever done us wrong. We release that. We cleanse our mind right now with the washing of your word that we are going to walk in love. We are going to walk in compassion. We are going to walk in the goodness of God that is the power to lead people to repentance. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, repentance means to change your mind and go the other way. And we repent before you, God, of ways that we have walked in that have not been pleasing to you, nor have walked in the faith that you have called us to walk in, in Jesus' name. We ask for you to forgive us. We ask you to cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. We ask for renewal in our spirit. Set a right spirit on the inside of us, God. Hook our minds up with your word that we can be transformed to look more like you in 2020. That we can see clearly now what it is that you have for our lives. We are not going to run. We are not going to tuck our tails. We are going to face the future head on with a determination, a hope, an expectation that is you are going to move among us in Jesus name and we give you all the glory for it in the name of Jesus 
This is nothing we can do without the leading of your spirit. It is nothing we can do of ourselves. But with you, you make all things possible. God, I surrender my mind to you. I surrender my will to you. I surrender my emotions to you today. And I ask, Father God, for you to set it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you glory and I give you praise. Is there anybody in this place that needs prayer this morning? Anybody at all that wants needs prayer? In Jesus' name right now, I just thank you, God. I just thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you just stretch your hands this